what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you're new to this channel, or you have not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and a link in the info box below the video once it's rendered. But most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show increases the live audience, of course, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Sleeping Warrior. How are you doing? All is well, all is well. How are we? Very well. Nice weekend. You've gone very quiet. I'm very quiet. I know, it's all right now. Oh, yeah, the okay. weather, what's your weather doing today? Uh, just as crappy as everyone else has had this weekend. So you and I had glorious weather and... Uh, you know, went to the beach and got sunburnt and all those good things. Ate ice cream while everyone else was getting flooded and having lightning. <laughs> Marvellous. <laughs> yeah, it's got clear blue skies, 28 degrees. It's glorious. So yeah, it was lovely. It's unusual for us to almost, uh, have such almost good too hot. <laughs> for it to be, it's not even technically summer yet either, as well. That's the other thing that's a bit weird. Yeah, spring. Yeah, spring. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Apart from the people who got flooded and had thunderstorms, who it wasn't so good for. But there we go. That's life. <laughs> for us, it was great. <laughs> it was that good that you, basically I wanted Nathan to go live and Nathan couldn't be bothered because it was too hot. Too nice. It, I was like, nah. <laughs> I'll do a quick live stream from the beach just to let him know. And you were like, yeah, we might be going live later. Yeah, we might be. But we might not be. Yeah. Well... So the, all that unexpectedly nice weather was not replicated up and down the country, which I find unbelievable. It was like we, we were in a different country almost. It seemed that way, considering how small the country we're in is and how, how big a difference there can be from one end of it to the other is just incredible, really. But yes, it did seem like we were on a different, different, completely different country, but obviously we weren't, just a couple of hundred miles up north. Dark Star says, "Did Ranty get sunburn on his head? I have no idea. I think Ranty's out working. Uh, I haven't heard from him either, other than in a comment on one of the videos. So we're on twenty-eight degrees at the minute, twenty-eight, twenty-nine degrees. But yesterday was thirty-one. It peaked out at happy days. One of the, one of the flat Earth things we did discuss um, over the weekend was Al K and his flat Earth evidence." And just to summarise, Al K has released some um, excellent footage of a mountain at about 31 and 39 miles. And in essence, from the images that I've seen from his video, we've got the same mountain, just a bit more squashed as he gets lower to the ground, more converged at the horizon, exactly as you would expect on a flat plane. But ultimately, we've got, if you want to call it obstructed in any way, shape or form, about 90% of this mountain on display. Now, the reality is that no matter which way you dice it, if you're on a sphere Earth, a good percentage from all altitudes, let's say at best case scenario for them, 50% minimum of this mountain should be obscured. Hey, hey Plain hey. Truth, how are you doing? Doing well, doing well. Good to have you. So we're just talking about Al K's mountain. And um, I've been batting a same, banging a same drum that Anthony has when asking Al K, why haven't you actually disclosed this? Why have you claimed that there's an obstruction obscuring some 70-foot, 80-foot lighthouse that's on the sea level when you've clearly got things like mist on the horizon, various other things, waves for a start that by foreshortening effects could easily obscure something so small at such a distance. But yet we've got nearly the, nearly the whole mountain and he just seems to be dancing around this detail without actually addressing it in any way. So I'm not sure if anybody else has seen Al Kay's video. We did a little... Uh, little presentation it was one of the videos i released while we were down in st b's just as a mirror from 
the last debate I think it might have been um so yeah interesting Anthony what's your what's your position on it I know we've discussed it but yeah um well is the link public yet yeah link's public link's always public public show yeah it's just that if I scrim- share my screen at the minute and the link's public I'm not gonna be able to keep an eye on the back chat I uh, will risk it another day if they trial troll us and snipe us it's just another day let's not concern ourselves all right so I'll share my entire screen then, but I'll do it in such a way that leaves the um, the thingy open. Right, so let me get up paint. If I make this a little bit... so we... Hey, Wiggles. Wiggles. How you doing? Can you hear us? Doesn't seem like it's the real one. Well, give me a check. Give me a sec. Can you hear us, Wiggles? Oh, hello? Yeah, yes, hello. Can... Good to have can you. Hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you for having me. How, how was your trip to St. Bees? Beautiful. <laughs> lovely, lovely. No complaints. Yeah, I was, uh, well, we'll get in. I'm not sure when you're getting into the debate section, but uh, I got some stuff prepared. Immediately. So, Immediately. what we got on screen, Wiggles, for your viewing pleasure, is a mountain seen from various different elevations by an anti-flat earth proponent named Al K. Unfortunately for Al K, the earth gets in the way of the vast majority of this mountain. So, the question I suppose I could ask you, Wiggles, would you assert, yes. as a rational, rational human being, that this mountain is in fact an optical illusion that we cannot see and it is being loomed up from behind a curve of the earth at various altitudes? Would you say that this is... In fact, a figment, figment of optical uh, effects. It is a uh, non-real entity. It is a mirage. Would you say that is correct or incorrect? Um, from my personal data and experience, it, it's possible that you can get mirages that sort of boost things above the horizon that uh, in normal straight line uh, vision would not be able to be seen. That, that can happen. So I, I can't know from this. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know anything about this refra- refraction. Is like I asked, they uh, went on the astronomy subreddit and I asked some of the, um, the people there, can you give me some, just give me some basic numbers just to calculate how much the light is going to bend. They, they said, it, man, it's a mess. Don't, don't try. <laughs> That's... Okay, but, but that doesn't really answer the question. So we've got these mountains on screen. Would yeah. you say, okay, I'll rephrase it. In your okay. world of globe belief, Wiggles, you mm-hmm. must accept that this is a mirage, that we cannot actually see the vast majority of this mountain should we presuppose we're on a sphere Earth. So do you accept that what this is on screen, by virtue of you being a sphere believer, is a mirage? Yes or no? Uh, well, there's there's three numbers. If I might be able to share my screen, because uh, um, let's see, uh, like um, on my on my screen here, I have this calculator which I use, right? Like I can derive the math from this. This is the image I was drawing the other day. I don't know. Like if if there were a way for me to actually share my screen itself rather than just a you know a webcam on my screen. I could do some like explanations. Is there a way to do that? I mean, sure, but is it going to answer my question? Do you accept that the mountain is actually not there and is therefore by definition on a sphere Earth a mirage? Do you accept that? Uh, I need three numbers. I need the distance between... The no, you don't. The... I'll tell you again because you seem to be ignoring. I'm stating by virtue of fact... When it comes to the spherical mathematics, this mountain is, by definition, a mirage in your global world. Do you accept that or not? uh, Nathan, in order to answer that question, I need three numbers. I need the distance between the cameraman and the mountain. I need the height of the cameraman above sea level. And I need the height of the mountain tip above sea level. All right. So your answers are 39 miles for the distance. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, 39 miles for the distance. Okay, yeah. One foot for the camera height. So the camera's one foot. Yeah. And the tip, the, the tippy top of the mountain was 1,100 
and I believe 27 feet. 1127. Okay, I'm going to plug that in my calculator right now. So let's see. Um, observer height, one foot. Distance to object, 39 miles. And yeah, it should only be 951 feet hidden below the horizon. So in fact, it should be visible on a globe. Should be what? Say that again. Sorry, I missed your conclusion. Uh, so according to these three numbers that I've been given, I'm, I'm, these, uh, I'm going to trust you on these, the accuracy of these numbers here. I'm just going to assume that you're giving me the correct information. Um, yeah, it should be visible on a globe. It's totally that the fact that the top of the mountain can be seen is completely in agreement with the globe model. Sorry, the top of the mountain? Yes. How much is the top? Uh, it, uh, this, whoever it was, um, the guy with the, the short, Give me a number. It's a number. That's the, not an answer. That's a numerical. Numerical video. answer, please. How much of the mountain should we see on a sphere? Um, 1127 minus 951 feet, which is, I guess, 6, 2 carat is 7 is 5, is this a 10, is 1, 176 feet. 176 feet. So, Correct. would you say that that is a 176-foot-high mountain that we are seeing in these images, Wiggles? Uh, would you say that? I don't know. I can't really tell. Can't really Me, tell if that's 170 feet tall? Can you put it back on screen, Sleeping be. Warrior? Yeah, it could be. I mean, we don't have a reference point for the rest of the mountain here. Oh, but we do. Okay, oh, good. good. Let, let, I tell you what, let, let's not corner Wiggles at this point, because it's fair that he's... It's fair that he's not seen it. Explained. No, no, I just still haven't got an answer to my original question. By definition, do you accept, Wickles, that this yes. mountain, not 200 feet of a tippy top of a mountain, this mountain is by definition a mirage on your sphere world? Do you accept that, as I originally asked, or not? Um, no, I accept that I'm looking at the real thing. Oh, well, you're not, because you should only see 200 feet of it. Yeah, so look, can we see the whole mountain for reference? Uh, yes. Do you want to bring up Google okay, Earth, Anthony, just to see what now. it looks like from f mere feet away? Well, we said we're 39 miles away from it, right? Yes, and so now we're going to look what we see when we're only a few feet away, Wiggles. Okay, perfect. Okay, 39 miles, yeah, 39.11. Well, I didn't do it exact, I did it just to get the angle of observation. I can, oh, do, yeah, yeah. I can do it accurate if you'd like me to, but it's, it's 39 miles. So yeah, that's 39 is close enough. So, how far are we away now? Um, On Google Earth. Well, well I mean, like, it, the image you've shown us could definitely, like, um, was it 170? I always have a calculator handy. Do I? Yes, I do. Um, so let's see. One, one, two, seven divided by 176. Uh, Sorry, Google's. I don't, I don't okay, need so any calculations. I don't need any numbers. Give me any numbers when I don't need them now. So I'll ask my question again, right? Yeah. Do you accept that in these images you are seeing a refraction, a holographic effect? A mirage. Well, hang on, hang on. He's just said then 15 to 20 percent. It's it's nearer to 15. It's, in fact, it's 13.6 percent. But where, where would you draw the line between what is what you would expect to see compared to what you wouldn't see? Because I'm going to say it's here somewhere, like there. Yeah, you know, about, about a fifth, a little bit less than a fifth of the mountain should be visible. But again, there is there is some atmospheric refraction. Sorry, I'll just say it one more time. So if a fifth should be visible and this is what it looks like when you're close to it, would you accept yeah. that most of it is therefore not visible? Therefore, because it is seen, it is therefore in your world a mirage? My original question. Um, Are we seeing the whole mountain, Nathan? I'll just sum it up again. It must, Wiggles. 
It must be a mirage in your world. Well, Wiggles, let me help you with what... I don't mind him. Do, I don't mind Anthony. I don't mind him constantly having this cognitive dissonance when I tell him about five times that it must be a mirage in his world while he tries to crunch yeah. the numbers. I just want him to yeah, fight to it rather than accept it. I like him fighting this. So do you accept yeah, that it's a mirage, Wiggles? Yes or no? It must be in your I world. Some of it may be a mirage and some of it may not be a mirage. It may be like Sorry, the first you don't couple... get to have it both ways, Wiggles. It's either all a mirage, it's either all looming, or it's not. You don't get to have it both ways, my friend. You don't get to have a line of sight with some of it and some of it be a mirage. That's nonsensical. Uh, why Why is that? Well, because you can't have the bottom looming up and the top being in the correct place now, can you? That would be a paradox. Do you not understand how you can't have direct line of sight with the top and yet the bottom be miraged from behind about 800 feet of earth curve? Do you understand this, Wiggles? It is fairly uh, well, simple. If you don't have line of sight with some of it, all of it is being loomed. Therefore, all of it is a mirage. Now, I'm going to ask this for about the sixth time. Do you accept, yeah, okay. Wiggles, that what you see on screen is a mirage, a figment of optical imagination, if you will, something that is not in fact there, something that is being loomed by optical effects above a curved earth that you presuppose with mathematics. Do you accept this, yes or no? Um, okay, yeah, so let's begin to answer the question. So Are is that a yes? Not paint, begin yeah. There is no question. The question was simple. Do you accept that it is a mirage? If the answer is yes, we can move on. Um, can you please, for me, in paint, select the rectangle tool with your mouse? No. I need a firm yes or a firm no to an acceptance of the fact that in your bullshit spherical world, this is a mirage. Um... Oh, your stream is kind of lagging for me a little bit here. No problem. I'll say it again for about the tenth time. Do you accept the fact no, okay, that in your th world, this entire mountain is not really there? It is, in fact, by definition, a mirage. Do you accept that, yes or no? Uh, some of it is mirage. And All of it is mirage. I've just explained this to you. I'm going to start getting annoyed if you don't listen. Why is my stream offline? Ah, oh, for the love of God. There we go. We're back live again. Ian Nathan. Sorry. This is the point that me and Nathan have been discussing. Now, now the, the question is... Hang on. The question is, what should... The amount of land that's supposed to be visible look like from the distance in hand. A hard horizon line, and you see a little smudge of land on top of it. The land, the smudge of land on top of it is 300. Um, seems like the live stream went offline. Don't worry, Wiggles, it's still recording. Okay, but the live streams it went offline and it's like buffering. Wiggles, why are you dodging it? Why don't you just answer the question? Why is it that you cannot accept that this is a mirage? It is in your bullshit world of sphericity. Why is it that you can't accept this? Um, well, I should... In, in the world of spheric, sphericity, I don't know how to say that word. That's a new word for me. In the world of sphericalness, the world, the, in the globe world, let's say that, uh, the top 176 feet should be visible. Right, you don't get to have it both ways. I've just explained this. You can't have a direct oh, line the, of sight with the, the top world, and have the bottom looming. It doesn't work feet like of that. that. mountain should be visible. No, the top should be visible if you have the geometric curve of the Earth taken into account. If the rest of it is looming up above the horizon, then the top must also be looming with it for it to stay in the same shape. Obviously, you can't have some of it with direct line of sight and some of it be mirage. That's nonsense. Why is that nonsense? Because you can't have direct line of sight with the top and then have the bottom looming up. That makes no sense. So that happens on a... that happens. That's... Uh, why can't that happen? I, I don't know why you have a problem with that. 
Because it's nonsense. You can't have... Nonsense is not a reason. Give me a legitimate scientific uh, reason why uh, you can't see the, like, the top of something might be like... The, the light might be coming straight from to your eyes from the top of it, and then the bottom... Fun, fun, fun. There will be a short interlude. Wiggles being tore a new asshole obviously has displeased the trolls. I don't blame them. There's a few links been sent out on Skype if you want to pick those up. Hey Nummy. Oops, take you off mute, sorry. Hey Nummy. How's it going, man? <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Internet connections galore, and then um and then we all get sniped. Just cause gi giggles is being held to the ropes. Yeah, they don't like you when you do that. But you're doing a good job, Nathan. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Hope the I hope the audience enjoyed it too. We're getting there. We're just about there. So hopefully yeah. Wiggles will uh It's all coming along quite nicely, I would say. Hey Yo. sleeping warrior. My I'll keep the link private for about five minutes while we dissect what just happened, and then we'll put the link out again. You carry on. There was kind of a presentation going on before Wiggles even joined. So if you want to carry on, sleep and worry, be my guest. Okay. Um. Okay, lies. Right. Zooming a little bit. Now Wiggles didn't actually um, represent the globe, the globe Earth position accurately. What he said was that the top 200 and whatever feet should be visible. Well, it was 38.3 miles or 38.7 miles away. And this is the picture that he took. Now, because he's at one foot observer height, it's the bulge figure and the drop figure that are important. Now, these only apply when you're close to the surface, we're told. They don't apply when you're up a hill. But because we are at a surface or at the surface, they both apply. Now you can see that the drop value is 1,014. The total height of the mountain is 1,100 feet. So there's only like 70 or 80 feet protruding beyond the drop value. But in addition to the drop value, there's a bulge of water 253 feet in your way, halfway between you and it. So even though the drop value, it's dropped almost all of the mountain, there's a bulge in the way as well that's half the distance to you, which is bigger than the drop value in the background because of perspective. None of this mountain should be seen. None of it. Not, not even the slither at the top. Because there's a bulge and a drop, not just a drop. Because we're at the, the surface. We're, at the, we're at the, literally on the surface of the water. So it's not accurate to say that there should be two, 300 feet. But if somebody argues that there is, because I like to make the, I I like to allow the conversation to go on. Let's just go with the actual refracted hidden value because that's what they always use, um, just for the sake of discussion. But the actual geometric maths state that that mountain is gone. If you can't accept that, then you dismiss your own maths because we live on a sphere, according to you guys. 
But you always go to the refracted hidden value at this distance, right? Which was smaller than the actual distance. I didn't round it up to 39. I rounded it down to 38. Anyway, the refracted hidden value is 811, which is what he was alluding towards. That means you've got 911, 1011, 1111. You've got about 300 feet of what you would expect. In, according, If you're going to lie about the geometry side, you've got about 300 feet. Now, this is what 300 feet of land looks like from just 34 miles. You have a hard horizon, and then you have 300 feet along the top of the horizon, which is flattened land. That's what 300 feet at that, dis that kind of distance actually looks like. Now, obviously, we have significantly more than that. So if that's 300 feet from 34 miles, four, four miles more, you would expect that to get smaller, only a little bit, but you would expect it to be smaller, and therefore it should represent itself as a thin, flat line along the bottom of the thing, um, and it would be, basically, it would be the, the tippy tops of it. But that's not what we're seeing. We're seeing a big triangle that is sig scale-wise significantly bigger than what we see at the top, because that is 300 feet at 34 miles. That's not, it's not compatible with arguing that we're only seeing the top of it. Now, when Al Kay changed his elevation, um, he claimed he could then see the flashing light of the lighthouse because of the curve of the Earth. Now, I accept he could see the flashing light of the lighthouse, but it wasn't because of the curve of the Earth, because if it was the curve of the Earth, it would be up here somewhere that we would be arguing about. You can't have an argument at the beach level for a curved Earth on a mountain that's supposed to be gone behind the curve, because the curve is up here, right? So whatever's going on down here is moot in the fact that it's got nothing to do with the curvature because it's in the wrong place. Now, the ballers have got to accept that that's in the wrong place. This is not an argument about curve. It's an argument. Yeah, sure. Why did it change when you went up in elevation? But the fact of the matter is this. If it was curve, we'd be arguing about the tippy tops of it. So we know that it's not curve because we're arguing about the beach from 39 miles away. Or and this, this, is, this is when he was at Waterside Beach. So this one's 30, call it 31 miles. But even so, if it was a curved argument and we were arguing about curvature, we would be arguing about what's going on up here, not what, what's going on with a, um, a lighthouse that's got a focal height of 69 feet. So he's arguing about the, like a pixel along the horizon in, and calling it curvature. But actually, if it was a curvature argument, we'd be arguing about up here somewhere. So fundamentally, the, the ball position is that this mountain should be gone. None of it should be seen because there is a drop of that, but there's also a bulge of 253 feet in the middle that perspective would drown out all of it. So it doesn't really matter whether we're seeing all of this or most of it or some of it. The fact that we see any of it means that it can't be a ball. That's the real position. Now, Dawn Treader, I speak to him privately offline. Ruhif, I speak to him privately offline. But I've had to block both of them because in the last 24, 48 hours, neither of them are showing intellectual honesty because neither of them can... Rufus wants to... He realises that light doesn't bend as much as what um, it needs to bend because of Fermat's principle, the, the refractive index, etc. So rather than manipulate the light, he started to manipulate the radius of the Earth and call it an apparent radius of the Earth. And I just find that dis dishonest. I think if, you're gonna if you can't have one and then you're going to try and manipulate the other... The radius of the Earth is fixed. You can't change it. And you can't have an apparent radius to make it look flat. You just can't do it. So Rue's gone. I've had to get rid of Rue because he's not being intellectually honest. But the same for Dawn. Dawn said to me, I would only ever accept that the Earth's flat if there was um, uh, extraordinary evidence to, to the contrary of the ball. Well, here he has it. You're looking at it right now. There is a mountain on screen that should not be there if we live on a ball. None of it. You shouldn't see any of it. Now, I don't care whether you're going to argue that we see well, 85% of it, 90% of it, 100% of it. I don't care how much there's there. The fact that there's any of it. And Dawn can't get his head around the fact that this shouldn't be visible on a sphere. He accepts that light can bend, and he thinks that I'm exaggerating. No, the only thing that I'm exaggerating, and it's not exaggeration, the correct word is emphasizing, is that the geometric mass of the ball that we live on shows that this thing should not be visible. Okay? It should be gone. Now, why is it we see it? And the only obvious and observable fact is that it's because the Earth's flat. Nath? That's it, yeah. Excellent. I mean, I'm happy to end it there. I'll stick the link out. People can join, challenge us on it if they will. But 
Yeah, very concise, very well done. Thank you very much, Alkay, for the flat earth evidence. Really yeah. appreciate it. And I'm sorry, Dawn, about to block you, but ultimately, if you're not going to accept that this mountain should not be seen, then you are intellectually dishonest. It's the same for Ruhif. If you cannot accept, if you realize that you can't manipulate light to bend around the amount of 700 feet of curve on the Alaman stuff, if you're going to resort to bend and changing the radius of the Earth and calling it an apparent radius, that's dishonest as well. So it becomes, it, it becomes, you just got to accept that these ballers are not honest. They're lying. They're lying to themselves, but they're pushing that lie to other people. And the, because they're pushing it to other people, it makes other people think that we're living on a ball that we don't. So I'm sorry, guys, but you two have had to go because you're not being intellectually honest. Right, got Wiggles. He's still asserting it. About 200 feet of the mountain should be visible. Right, that's not no, what we Wiggles. see, Wiggles. We don't see 200 feet of it. Just put your screen back up, Anthony, with your what 200 feet should look like. Because Wiggles is obviously blind. Yeah, but the assertion's wrong in the first place, Nathan. We shouldn't see 200 feet. None of it should be seen because of the bulge that's in the middle. That, because of perspective, would drown out the little bit that's in the background, the slither on the horizon in the background. Right, um, again, we've got a few people in the chat saying you should see 200 feet. Based on no, what? No, you shouldn't. Based on, hold on, let's just bring it back to Bass Stats. Based on what? Anybody in the chat who thinks we should see 200 feet is is just nuts on account of the fact, number one, we don't see 200 feet. We see considerably more than 200 feet. So that is simply cognitive dissonance speaking. We're not looking at 200 feet and arguing about seeing 200 feet. We're seeing all of it. It's as simple as that. Now, that, the person who's... That, hold on. I, 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 hold on. Hang on a second, Nathan. Hold on. Wait, wait. Oh, okay. Hang on, that, that 200 feet claim is not accurate. That's not the ball position. The 200 feet comes from this refracted hidden nonsense, right? Which assumes the 7.6 and it assumes the radius. But before you get to that, you have to accept that the geometric shape of the Earth, the ball that we're supposed to live on, has a drop value of 1,014 feet and it has a bulge in between you and it of three, 250 feet. But because that bulge is half the distance away from you and the observer, that the observer and the target, that's going to drown out the little slither that it should be on the horizon, and you shouldn't see any of it. So it's not accurate to say we should see, oh, well, we refracted hidden values 800. No, there is a bulge of water 250 feet, and a no, drop isn't. of a thousand no, there feet isn't. behind you, it. This is why I None stopped you. Mountain. Sorry, I've got to stop you. There is no bulge of water between us and it, and the thing that demonstrates that is the fact that we can actually see it. So you're now begging the question for them, and it's frustrating. What we should and shouldn't see is based on total presupposition. So anybody who wants to say we should see 200 feet has got two issues. Number one, we don't see 200 feet. That's not what we're looking at, yeah? Number two, you're begging the question. You're saying we should see something we don't see based on a presupposition we're on a sphere. The whole thing's bananas. You're all nuts, Globers. You're all bonkers. But the reason why I'm arguing it for them is because they think that you should see 200 feet. Actually, the ball position is that you should see none of it. None. But if you want to come on and challenge that, be my guest. There's a link there for anybody and everybody to join. But the reality is there is a bulge and a drop that you've got to accept before you can get to the refracted hidden bit. And if you can accept that none of that should be seen, then you have to prove the refraction, which we all know that is whatever. But that's the position. None of it should be seen. None. Yeah, 200 feet, all of it, none of it. What we see is not what we get. What we're seeing is the full mountain. So regardless of how much one that they want to claim, we should see if you presuppose an R value and presuppose 7.6 of that R value and then realise that you're still not seeing what we're supposed to be seeing, then you're nuts if you want to do that. Just accept it. It's there. It's not a mirage. It's not a hologram. There's no 200 feet plus anything. It's just there. You can go any day and take a picture of it yourself. And I encourage all to do exactly that. Go and have a look. Have a look at the mountain that in all sorts of different conditions will be visible. It won't and be on... refracted, hidden to certain degrees. It won't ever be looming above the horizon like a floating, flying mountain. It'll just be there depending on the weather conditions. That's it. And to be honest, if anybody's got access to um, Delph and Beyond the Imaginary Curve, just ask him if he'll like, come and join because I'd like to know what the original argument was. Because I don't know where the original argument from Dell was, but he was um, Al K was responding to that, and he's claiming whatever. So I I'd like to know what the original assertion was by Dell, because I don't know where that that information is, um, to be able to track it down myself. And it, it could be anywhere on on his channel. He's got loads of videos, 
So if anyone can get in touch with Dell and ask him to come and join so we can just basically tear this guy a new arsehole, it would be great to know what Dell's position is on it because I'm sure I'm sure Dell's going to basically agree with what we're saying in addition to his own point, which has Al K claims that he's debunked. But I don't think Al K knows what debunking is. Yeah, you've got lots of people still with cognitive dissonance. Arc, I can't quite read that this distance. Arc is something get X says... You are lying. It is not the whole mountain. It's just the tippy top. If you want to kid yourself that that's 200 feet of mountain, let's just do it again, Anthony. Can you just put it up and show them what 200 feet looks like? Just for the third okay. time, for yet another person in the chat that's telling us we're seeing 200 feet. No, we're not. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> if you want to tell yourself that, that's fine. It's amusing. Good for you, mate. So this is this is four miles closer. So therefore, you would expect this, what I'm about to show you, to appear bigger than what we actually expect to see. But this is 300 feet worth of land from 34 miles. So so hold on, just because the audience has got two things on screen. I know you've got your mouse pointer on it, but let's just see just the 300 feet, if you can scroll up a bit further. So it's just exactly, there you go. Bit, bit, I maybe. can't because it, no worries, it don't worry. I'll, so I'll highlight it as well. So we're just looking at this picture. This is what 300 feet of land looks like. And now both Anthony and I are circling what that looks like. Yeah, that's 300 feet of land. This, and not just that. This isn't, in this isn't 300 feet of land, right? This is no tippy top of anything. This is used, this is using digital zoom as well, which Al -Kay, um I don't know whether he did or did not use, but I'm zooming in as far as I possibly can because 300 feet on the horizon is, is a thin slither. It's like doing, um, it's like an underline on it. It's nothing. Now, I can understand why Slice Barcane may initially not see this, but intellectually, to be honest, Slice Barcane has to accept that this is land. But as far as I'm, I'm aware, he still denies it. I know he was on last night, and I got told he was on last night, but I declined to go in because ultimately, until you change your position, Sly, there's no conversation. But the point is, this is 300 feet of land on the horizon from four miles closer. So this is this this is bigger. So you would expect 300, um, 300 feet of land from 38 miles, four miles further, to appear smaller than this. And look how much we see it relative to the horizon. So it's not accurate to say that this is 300 feet. This is obviously, observably, what, eight, six, eight, ten times bigger than what we're actually seeing. So if you think that we're seeing the top 300 feet, okay, we'll come on the panel and argue it. But you'll have to explain this is what it actually should look like. Yeah, come on, Wiggles. You keep asserting the same thing over and over again. You're just nuts. If you want to claim that we're seeing 300 feet, come and explain it to us. I've had enough of yeah. explaining to you your nonsense. Yeah. With you not accepting your own nonsense. Me knowing it better than you do, as per usual. So you can come on now and t explain to us how this is 300 feet that we're looking at. I'd love to hear it. And Give you another if verbal was, backhand. I mean, even if we accepted the point that it was 300 feet, you have to start with the, the, the drop value and the bulge value first. You have to accept and concede that this mountain should not be seen at all. And it's only with this nonsense that you that you guys wish and wor worship and wish on that is the refracted um, values for this refraction that brings back the, like the tippy tops of it, right? And if it was the tippy tops of it, it would look like that, a thin slither on the horizon. So this triangle would be down here and it'd be tiny because that's what 300 feet at 38 miles would look like. Not this big massive thing that we're looking at that is clearly substantial. So, and basically, it's just ridiculous. But this is the reason why I've had to block Dawn, because Dawn can't accept that the mountain shouldn't even be seen. Well, if you can't accept that the mountain shouldn't even be seen, then you are literally retarded or dis intellectually dishonest or you lack the capacity to understand scale. Now, I know Dawn's the first thing, scale. Well, anybody who joins, Anthony, has first got to explain to us how this bottom image is 300 feet, because that's what they've got to argue, because they all keep asserting it. It's 300 feet visible. It's like, so that's 300 feet, is it? Okay, tell us all well, about it. You explain to me how this is 300 feet of land that we're seeing. Well, this takes us then to the next picture, right? This is, I, I didn't put enough on here, but this is the one where the lighthouse was when he was at the different elevation. And you can see that that cutout notchy bit there is the same cutout notchy bit that's there. So basically, if, if that bit and that bit are the same part, then the only bit that's missing here is literally the length of this black line that's underneath. Otherwise, he'd be seeing all of it. And he wouldn't be able to argue. Otherwise, there's a little, there's evidence of a little inferior mirage or a superior mirage on the horizon, and that's what's blocking out the lighthouse. But even if, I mean, the the difference between what we see when he sees the lighthouse, 
to what we see when we don't see the lighthouse, it's exactly the same. The same thing is seen. So it's like, there's the, there's the notch. There's the notch. So we're seeing the same thing. And all that's happening is it's because of his elevation change, it's slightly different. But we're seeing the same thing, but for this little black line. So it's not 300 feet we're seeing. It's all of it. It looks like we're looking from a different angle too, doesn't it? Yeah, he's coming down the coast. It's changed its angle slightly. He's coming down. I mean, if I go back to Google Earth, I can show you what's happening while he's doing it. Um, yep. I'll have to. I'll have to do it again. But bear with me. It's a shame that Al's not on our side. The flat earth side because this is probably one of the best flat earth proofs I've ever seen. I don't know, I think Tim Osman's was better with those reflections on such a vast scale. I mean, that was glorious and it just looks so visually nice. This is just a grey hump. Just, yeah, it proves the earth's flat, but it doesn't look beautiful. It's all flat earth proof in the end. Yeah, exactly. So it's just about how beautiful it looks, in my opinion. <laughs> the aesthetics so of, our, of our wonderful flat earth. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, we do live in a very beautiful place, and the rock, great though it is at that distance, eh. <laughs> so the thing is, this is, he's looking down at Ailsa Craig. Let's get rid of that. He's looking down at Ailsa Craig, and it's 39 miles away, and I've not got it bang on, but um, just to make the point that um, the, the angle's changing as he's getting closer, he comes down this yellow line, or green line, whatever colour it is, does an observation around about here somewhere, and then he finishes with his final observation somewhere around here. So the angle is slightly changing. Um, it's negligible over that distance, but you are going to get a, a you are going to get a little bit of rotation in the island us. because it is changing. Hey, so it's about four or five degrees of rotation. Is that? I can't really see that number very well. What is it? I, th I think it goes for the bearing is heading is eighteen, and it goes down to thirteen. Yeah, five degrees. That's sig that's a significant amount. Yeah, so that kind of it is. That's five degrees is significant information to take into consideration a bit when you're comparing the profile of the mountain there. But, but don't forget that's that. You want to jump on the back door, there, Anthony? You were just getting um, trolled. Oh, I'll just kick Ruhif out. I'm sorry, donuts. I didn't realise you weren't a troll, but we are getting troll tool hell. So I don't know if you can give me a hand on kicking out them. That'd be great. Is Nummy still here? Yeah. Know. Yes, he is. Well, we lost Drew if that's not the end of the world. I don't think he honestly has the capacity anymore to, to understand what's really going on. That would have been nice to have him on as a... No, not really. I'd have ended up fighting with him because he wants to try and change the radius of the Earth into an apparent radius of the Earth to make it look flat. And I just think that's intellectually dishonest. Yeah, but we're supposed to fight here, right? This is the arena. That's what I debate. said. That's what I said exactly that to Anthony earlier. Well, okay, then in that case, bring him back in on um, Skype then, Nathan. I haven't got him on Skype. Just type in Ruhif on Skype and it'll oh, come, come on. His... I'm trying. <laughs> just... Yeah, I'm that's it. Get me. I'm numbers, trying to. So I'm trying to produce the show. <laughs> Get me doing it. <laughs> well, I've got him blocked, and I'm not even sure how to unblock him. But to be honest, I don't, I don't even want to make the effort because I just I'll end up losing my temper with him. He can come on the next show. There's going to be one tomorrow. It's all good. Yeah, I'm just saying, Anthony. Hey, oh, Rumpus. Look, now we've got somebody. Hold on, here. hold on. Is that you, Rumpus? It's me, yeah. Good, good, good. How are you doing? Good to have you. Yeah, hello. Yeah. You're talking utter bollocks, of course. Absolutely everything you were talking about there about what's missing, the bowl to drop. Well, hang, hang on, was we'll utter rubbish. Utter, utter rubbish. Well, what's happened? And then, what's the worst thing you've done, Anthony? Please start. Let's just keep what's, this. Yeah, what the worst thing, Anthony, is you're doing is you're using your image, your recent view of your video, which has got you've said yourself is everything compressed in it and then you're using that as an example of 300 feet when you know fully well that that's compressed and not reflecting what you normally see so you're talking yeah, utter why, is bollocks. why is it compressed you well, I, I can explain to you from the conditions and this is this what hangout that i've been meaning to have with philip over the last bloody few weeks which we ha were supposed to have yesterday but probably won't be having until tomorrow you know, yeah, well, that, you and you accepted. Like, well, well done, Anthony. And you accepted 
that that image of yours was compressed. Everything in that video was compressed. And that's due to super looming because you were there under some very strange optical conditions. And you even accepted that. You even said yourself that the images were compressed. And now you're using that as an example of what 300 feet looks like from 38 miles. You know that not to be true. You idiot. Or you're an absolute idiot. One of the two. Can you just leave the comments out, please? On a flat plane, it would be compressed. On a ball earth, it can't possibly you be You said yourself that it was compressed. And you know Run, damn well respond, it's Rumpus. Come on, just let him respond. Yeah. Just let him respond, did Rumpus. You... Did, did you hear what I said? I said on a not. Flat he was talking plane, all over you. you. Just let him respond, Rumpus. I didn't interrupt. I let him go. On a flat plane, you would expect it to be compressed. Jack. No. No. You know full well, Anthony, what it looks like from last year. Your previous video shows it looking very, 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 very different. And so you've got yeah, two images. No, it's not consistent. They're completely different. Oh, damn it. Oh, there'll be another short interlude by the looks of things. All my panels got kicked for the second time today. Welcome back to Flat Earth Debate. Where's he so when you need him? Welcome to the show. You don't know. <laughs> hey, Bob. I'm going to start a new hangout. I've been humming that all weekend, Nathan. Oh, is that not Bob? No, it's <laughs> someone from the hangout. Sorry, I forgot you were there, Adam. Second time I've done that, mate. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'm just starting a new hangout, mate. Yeah, there is. I got kicked first joining, so both <laughs> Iron Realm and my account banned for the day. It's good to be back. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do love this show. It's good. It is very entertaining for me sat here. <laughs> that was fun. I only joined because it was that disruptive early on at the internet. I thought I'll just join the hangout. At least I can. I'll be able to just listen. Uninterrupted and uh, was was kicked instantly, mate. So it's, <laughs> it's just the way things. It's a battlefield, mate. It's, it's, we are live, by the way. I'm sure you still. I'm sure you're aware, but just to let you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, uh, hence why the singing didn't continue. <laughs> <laughs> it's me too. <laughs> One line is all you'll get out of me. <laughs> <laughs> we would stay in tune for one line, just about. Yeah. How can I explain to Wiggles that it's not possible to have line of sight with the top of it and not line of sight with the bottom of it? How can I well, explain that? Well, I suppose the bit I was I was going to interject is it's fine if if you're going to say it all looms up uh, or it all refracts there. Mm -hmm. But what happens? It, let's just assume there is the little tippy top you can see. What happens to your direct line of sight? to that object. Um, well, we already covered that with Rumpus actually. So they did an out calculation when we were on Steve's show. And in mm -hmm. essence, it proves by definition of the calculations necessitating it to be all looming. You can't have a direct line of sight with it. That's not mm -hmm. that's not possible. Yeah, so so that's one confusion I find. But then the other one is obviously all of these effects are generated atmospherically. Uh, and what I find amazing is that you can get those same uh, gradient differences from the bottom of the mountain to the top so that the image renders um, so well now that may be the point that Rumpus is going to make in terms of compression and that so I'm, I'm just intrigued as to hey, no, me. where this one will go it's uh, if that is the case, I'll be interested to see it in Rumpus's, if we ever see that, in the in terms of the his, his modelling and how that accounts for the the differences in height and how that sets the light beams off at different rates and how yeah. that results in a... Yo. Hello. Uh, so what are we doing... Right, let's not go public with the link yet. Let's um, give the link privately to Rumpus and give it to Ruhif. And just get them two in, because if they're going to fight this, that's what we want. And let's see let's see the nonsense that comes up, because I don't, you're going to have either to be of them a, as contacts. a liar. Do you, do you have them as contacts? 
Rumpus. Yeah, or, or Ruhif. I don't have either of them. Um... I don't know what he's on. Uh, don't worry. Don't worry. The link will go out eventually. Hey, Mark. You know, they'll get their chance. There's going to be another hour show. In about 10 minutes, I'll have a break. You know, if the link goes out between now and then, I don't mind either way. I'll take your lead Hello, in that regard. Mate. You've opened this can of worms. I know we discussed yeah. it before the show at the well, weekend, but we I'll knew the what, can what? of worms. We, we, you know, we, we had two choices. We're going to do this frequently, by the way. Sorry to interrupt you, Anthony. So there's, there's quite a few outstanding issues, and it's down to us to highlight them repeatedly and start holding these people to account with these certain things. Al Kay's exceptionally good flat earth proof, <laughs> this isn't going to go away. Tim Osman's exceptional flat earth proof isn't going to go away. Rumpus is going to be held against the wall in terms of his apparent hangout that's four weeks late that was supposed to have been done in advance and just published when Anthony published his results. Seems four weeks later, hasn't been done. That was a total load of nonsense, lies. He hadn't pre-recorded anything. Hasn't even done it four weeks later. But when that finally comes around, you know, for a time, we'll let him beg the question and presuppose R and we'll see what his model does just for kicks and giggles. And then we'll laugh at him when he doesn't actually have any proof of the R value he presupposes. But for the time being, we're going to let him beg the question just for entertainment's sake. Same goes for Paul Voigt. You know, where's your evidence? Where is this self-perpetuating molten iron core? We need proof. We're going to hold these people to account and show the facts that they haven't actually attacked any of these issues at all. I think Rumpus is hoping that, that um, the, the missing Isle of Man curvature, 700 feet behind the curve, I think he's hoping that that goes away. But it's absolutely not going away because you guys said that you can explain this with maths. Well, let's see the maths because I want to see what maths you're actually manipulating and what to what extent. I want to see what you're doing. I don't want to see the pretty diagrams with the lines on it. I want to see what you've done to the maths. So, right. Uh, Nate, can you present my screen, sir? You are. So, uh, one of the things that people are obviously struggling with is that if the mountain represents the tree, the further away the mountain goes, the smaller it becomes. So, that 300 feet, when it's further away than what the 34-mile observation was that I was showing, is going to be smaller. So, it's going to appear on the horizon as a thin sliver that would be indistinguishable because it's so small because of its distance away. Like these trees in the background are so small that you can't discern that they are trees. But you can accept that the trees because he's making the point. But if we're only seeing 300 feet of the tippy top of that mountain, it should be tiny in the same way that... Because, yeah, look, I'll show you. I'll bring it back up again. Oops. If we're only seeing the tippy tops of it, you can see there's the hard horizon, the apparent horizon, and there's the land above it, and that's 34 miles, but it's only 300 feet. So are you realistically trying to tell me that that's, that's at 38 miles, it's four miles further, but somehow is all this elevation above the horizon? And you're going to try and tell me that's 300 feet? We have a scale comparison. You cannot change scale, perspective. We have a comparison. So you're going to have to literally lie about what you claim you see because we have a comparison. So, I don't know. How are you going to do that? You're going to do what Dawn did, uh, suggests and say, well, I'm exaggerating it. Well, if I'm exaggerating it, it's your model that I'm exaggerating to try and show you what your model should look like. I'm not exaggerating. I'm, I'm emphasizing what your position should be. I'm not exaggerating any claim. I'm saying that your model says that that mountain should be gone because it should be behind a drop of 1,014 feet with a 253-foot bulge between you and it, which would be much bigger than the 300 feet um, tippy-tops of uh, this, but from 38 miles away. And if you guys can't scale and understand that, you, are, you either lack the capacity to understand it, or you're stupid, or you're a liar. And I'm pretty sure Rumpus is going to come in and argue nonsense in the form of science, and I'm looking forward to it. And I'm glad he didn't come in in the last 20 minutes either. And with that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in. And also a massive thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible. If you like the show, you know what to do. If you dislike the show, you also know what to do. But if you did like it, maybe consider sharing it. 
subscribing if you've not done so already. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!